Okay, hello, hello everybody. Good evening and welcome to our final workshop of 2019, 2019. So I'll give you a few minutes to pop on. I know a lot of you are watching the replay this evening because you are out having fun at Christmas parties or whatever it is you're up to, which is completely understandable. So massive welcome to you and I hope you're able to catch up another time. Do say hi when you come on. I'd love to see who is watching. And those of you watching live, of course, in particular, say hello, let me know where you're watching from, and hopefully we'll have lots of interaction during the evening. Hey, Angela, great to see you. have been chatting to you lots today, so welcome to tonight's session. I know you have to leave early, so hopefully we'll get some good value into the beginning of the session in the meantime. So we are here to talk how to replace your salary in 2020. So what does that mean? Well, it means essentially getting your business up to a place where it's bringing in a full-time income. So perhaps you're already out of the corporate nine to five and you don't have a salary to replace, which I know one of you was saying earlier today, and that's fine. So of course it's easy to replace zero, and but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about getting your money to your position, getting your income to a place where this is actually a viable business, sustainable for the long run, and paying your bills. By the way, do say hi and let me know that you can hear me okay. Um, I'm not using my earphones now. I'm sitting on my computer off my phone, so hopefully this is all working for you. But do want to make sure that you. See me and hear me okay, so I'm not just talking to myself. And so again, we're talking about replacing your full-time income. And that means perhaps, as I said, you've already left your job and you're sort of dabbling in the business, you know, now you want to really step things up here in 2020, but is this a new year and a new decade to get things to that level where it's bringing in a consistent stream of income. So you're not just sort of chasing clients or hoping that you're gonna get someone next month and you don't know exactly where your next sale is going to come from. Um, but also if you're starting out and perhaps you've been building your business alongside your full-time jobs, so this is a side hustle, and now you're sort of at that pivot point, you know, now I need to go all in, I need this now to generate full-time income again, and um, I know it will generate a full-time income, so it's a matter of when rather than if. The sound is broken, says Angela. Well, I may have to put my earphones in. Let's see if that works then, Angela. Um, thank you for letting me know. I'll put them in, and we'll see if that improves things. Okay. Sounds not good, says Wendy. So is this better? If you could let me know if that's better, that would be great. I have this massive microphone here as well if we need it, but um would love for you to let me know if that's better now with the earphones in. Um, and I will just double check the settings if I can. But do let me know if um, you can hear me okay in the meantime. Let's see if I can check that the sound is on from the earphones. Much better, says Angela. Okay, so you're gonna have these um, Apple earphones. Maybe somebody will give me those little air AirPods for Christmas. Who knows, if I ask Santa very nicely, he'll give me some more attractive earphones. Okay, so we are going earphones, not to worry, but you can all hear me. Great to see you, Mandy, and thanks for letting me know that I had got ahead of myself a little bit and got into 2020 already when we're only in 2019. Um, but again, we're talking about how to break down um, all the different steps and strategies into a viable business plan. Importantly, getting the income, so of course that's really important, but at the same time enjoying it, building a business that we want to have and enjoy, and above all, of course, not killing ourselves doing it. So we're not talking about doing a gazillion different strategies that's going to tear you in lots of different pieces and, and um, you know, hustle away. I don't really like the word hustle. Um, but at the same time, we're taking this seriously and we are bringing in that income. So again, seeing a few of you more joining, do say hello as you join. Um, so I'm going to keep looking down at my notes because lots to cover today. We do have an hour and a half planned and we'll see how that goes. I appreciate, first of all, your time and trust spending this evening with me. I know you are all very busy with Christmas plans and so on. So really impressed that you're here, whether you're watching live or watching the replay and investing in yourself because that's what we're doing here. We're investing time, energy, potentially money into our new year, our new decade, into ourselves, into our business. And although it seems now like we might as well just wait until January um, and get started then, actually this is the best opportunity now before to get your thoughts in order and potentially chat with me. And I know I've had lots of calls with um, some of you in the last few weeks and really hit the ground running when January starts. Hey Rita, great to see you. Hopefully Charles is feeling better. Sorry to hear he had a bit of a cold, but hopefully you guys are all snuggling in at home and watching as well. So let's see um, how you guys get on this evening. But lovely for you to join me this evening.
Um, so again, let's get started because lots of material to get to and I know you guys have better things to do than sit here with me as we get close to Christmas. What I'd love for you to do, whether you're watching live or watching the replay, is to throw your questions at me throughout. Of course, I can then tailor it as much as possible to you, especially those of you watching live. It is a massive topic. I will talk at the end about how we can dig deeper into these and how we can work together next year to make sure that you're actually um, taking what we're talking about this evening in just sort of an hour or so quite superficially and really getting to grips with that and uh, taking that to the next level but of course hopefully and definitely you will be getting um, some ideas some fantastic value out of this evening whether you're already a client working with me in another program or one-on-one -on -one or um, you know you're very new to the group and this is a good introduction to um, what I'm teaching here and, and to getting your business off to the right start in 2020 as well so who is this for? Well, it's for you if you have already left the nine to five or perhaps you um, are still in the nine to five, but you are very actively pursuing an exit. So I know in the past um, I've been talking a lot about leaving the nine to five, leaving the nine to five. And so many of you said, but I've already left my nine to five. I've already got my business in place. I just haven't replaced my full time income. So you'll be seeing lots more content for you guys who are a little bit further along um, and really looking at then some more advanced I suppose strategies and um, more getting to grips with the tangible business strategies of building your brand getting those clients and getting the right business model and business plan in place now it's also for you if you know that you want to make this work now so you're no longer dabbling it's not a hobby it's not uh, something that you're just kind of testing out it's like no this is it and um, this is what we're going to do I know this is going to happen again it's not a question of if it is a question of when um, and again if you have the business basics in place and I know seeing some of the names up here you already have the idea you have the website you know who the client is um, and uh, and you are just ready to go essentially so this is for you now let me introduce myself because I know there are lots of new people joining maybe you haven't been so active in the group haven't seen me so much but hopefully that will change in the new year the new decade 2020 so my name is Anna Lundberg I'm the founder of One Step Outside I'm the author of Leaving the Corporate 9 to 5 and um, a book which is a collection of 50 stories of people who have guess what left the corporate 9 to 5 to either start a business go freelance create a portfolio career which is one of my favorite concepts in terms of doing a few different things which is a whole other topic for a whole other time but that's another um, part of the book changing sector because sometimes people don't want to leave the the structure of the job per se but they want to leave the corporate bit and also those among us including myself who have taken a leap of faith not knowing exactly what we wanted to do and sort of pushed ourselves over the cliff so that's a great book if you haven't already got it. It's a good place to start if you're new to the group. I'm also the host of the Reimagining Success podcast. I've been going for a year now, can't believe it. So we're on to episode 55 or so, I think. Um, so lots to be listening to and immersing yourself in, perhaps while you're baking or going for a nice little boxing day walk by yourself, maybe not with your family. They might not appreciate you putting your earphones in. Um, but that's me. Massive welcome to all of you, whether you're new or you've been with me throughout the year and beyond. And I suppose I should also say at the beginning now, I just want to take the opportunity to thank you for being part of the community, for showing up this year. And um, there've been lots of changes. I had a bit of time off, as many of you know, to have my little daughter, Sophia, and we're back in um, the game now and working hard, having fun, and 2020 looks set to be an exciting year. So hopefully you'll be joining me, coming along for the ride, um, and we will have an incredible new year and decade. So what are we going to be looking at? We're going to look at where to focus our time and energy in 2020 and beyond. And um, because the last thing we want to do is get overwhelmed, especially perhaps if you have left your job, suddenly you've got all this free time. You think, my goodness, where do I even start? And we immerse ourselves. We listen to all sorts of podcasts and watch every live we can get our hands on. And we follow every guru and we get torn in all these different directions. And then we try lots of different things and nothing works inevitably. Or perhaps we get a few clients, but then the next month suddenly we're not getting them and then we don't know what to do differently. We begin to question, hang on a second, is this really the right thing? Um, perhaps we've been working with a co-founder and that relationship is on the rocks and is that, that the right project to continue with? And then someone comes along and offers us a position, maybe a job or work that we don't really wanna do, but it does bring in money, so maybe I should and so on so that's what we're trying to avoid that overwhelm 
running in 100 different directions. We want to be super focused, spend the time we have, especially if we still have a full time job. We have very limited hours to oh, something's happening on my computer. Hopefully that's not going to interrupt the video. Um, so we have very few hours then perhaps the morning commute, our lunch break late nights if you guys are joining me here in the uk then you know it's in the evening now that we're spending our time together and potentially also the weekends and you want to make sure if you're spending the time with me let's say rather than with your partner or with your babies and dogs and whatever else you have you want to make sure that you know you're doing something with a lot of intention knowing that this is the thing right now i'm learning right now i'm exploring right now i'm prioritizing self-care or right now I am hustling away on this or talking to clients, whatever it is. So getting super, super clear on what those priorities are. And that's what I want to help you do this evening. And of course, um, in the weeks and months to come as well. Now, everything I'm sharing, by the way, is coming from a place of experience that I have made many mistakes over the last years since I started. I left my job back in 2013. So if you don't know my background, I used to work at Procter Gamble, Miss, uh, Mr. <laughs> Very Big Multinational Corporation. Um, I worked in branding and marketing. I started in sort of a design role, moved into more of a commercial operations role, and over time specialized in digital marketing. And I worked, and this is why um, actually this topic is such a passion for me, from my old corporate days, which yes, I have left behind, but there are so many elements of that that I now use and apply working with small businesses and startups and entrepreneurs. And one of those core pieces was content strategy. So I worked with, you know, we had access to, which I don't anymore have, unfortunately, but we had access to Facebook and media agencies and Google, YouTube and so on. I ran workshops um, to develop that content strategy, taking customers at the time from not having heard about your brand through to engaging with your brand, considering you, buying from you and then become, becoming loyal customers. And as you can imagine, that kind of funnel is something that's very much applicable to us today as our own business owners. In fact, it's even more important that we need to be able to take people from having never heard of us, whether we have a product or a service, whatever it is, through the different stages, nurturing them, getting to understand them, getting them to understand you and knowing who you are and knowing what your style is and so on, getting them to know, like, and trust you, as we often said, say, and then going through to ultimately, hopefully buying from you and becoming loyal customers as well. So I left there in 2013 and I have initially I started working with other companies and corporations. So I did some freelancing and contracting work. I then explored and studied coaching and became a certified and trained coach. And now I sort of combine those two things. So I still do a lot of marketing consulting work in particular training and writing in all things digital disruption business strategy and um, in fact recently I've started doing some material in time management and stress and resilience and so on. So there's a lot of um, overlap between that work that I do and then of course more my coaching mentoring that I do here in One Step Outside with you in terms of taking sort of the big brand strategies all that corporate experience but then adapting that and I said as I said before really learning from my mistakes um, so that you guys can make sure that you really accelerate your progress and don't make those mistakes. Now, a few of those mistakes, you know, in terms of what I did, and we'll already talk about some things that you can avoid. Um, when I initially graduated from my coach training, I came out enthusiastic and naive and excited, thinking, oh my goodness, I'm trained, I'm certified, now I'm ready to get clients. And then I sort of hustled away. I followed all the different gurus and I listened to all this free content. I signed up to every email newsletter, watched every live and started listening to podcasts and so on. And then I tried webinars and I tried this and all these email sequences and I created more and more content. And I, um, what else did I do? I created eBooks that I sold for three pounds, a couple of copies. And I um, did pretty much anything and everything um, without really seeing results. And it took some time for me to realize to my own, um, the sort of the damaging my ego, I suppose, to my own shame almost, um, that I couldn't do it alone. And this is a difficult realization for ourselves because we come from these fantastic backgrounds. We're all great at what we do. We're self-motivated, smart, competent. And it's very difficult for us to accept that we need to ask for help. But that is one of the mindset pieces in terms of being a business owner, being your own boss, being alone, essentially, is that we do have to sort of swallow our ego and recognize that we need to learn from others. One of my worst mistakes that I'll share with you, which hopefully you can learn from as well, um, was when I had one of my articles shared by Ariana Huffington. Um, so she used to run Huffington Post, of course, 
and um, now runs Thrive, which is a fantastic platform, very much in line with my whole concept of reimagining success. And um, she shared my post on LinkedIn. I got thousands of people um, coming onto my website. And how many clients do you think I got from that? Let you guess. I'm pretty sure I got zero. So I got a good hundred or so consults booked and this was four or five years ago um, and at the time I didn't really know how to sell I sort of was coaching them a lot of them didn't turn up because I didn't have a sort of application qualification process in place to get those clients to even see if they were relevant right many just turned up just to have some free coffee chat whatever and get my advice or hear my story and so on and that's still one of my biggest regrets because having that external publicity is such a fantastic opportunity and yet I wasn't able to capitalize on that because I didn't have that funnel in place understanding okay these clients are coming in I'm taking them through these very clear steps and this is how I'm going to get them to ultimately buy from me and that's what I now have now and I want to share with you all so really knowing okay this is how I'm attracting clients this is my positioning, this is who I am, this is what I offer, understanding you know, the different propositions that I have for people at different stages, and then knowing exactly what steps you want to take them through in order to nurture them, to help them get to know you, for you to understand what their um, you know, problems or questions are and so on, and needs, and then nurture them through the funnel. Now, of course, it depends, and I'd love to hear from you guys what all your businesses are. I know a few familiar faces there. And do say hi, by the way, if you're popping on later on so I know who's watching. Um, but of course, it's very different if you have a product or a service. Um, you know, we're not all coaches and consultants, so do let me know if you have a specific um, business that you'd like to talk about. But ultimately, it's the same thing. They need to know that we exist. They need to understand who we are, what we offer. We need to understand what they're looking for, and then we need to have you know, the product or service to, to meet that need. Um, and that's what I'd love to share with you all because that's something that's made a massive difference for me in my business, working with a number of coaches over the years, of course, and above all, as I said, making lots and lots of mistakes. So hoping this is going to help you overcome some of those sort of pitfalls that I've had, learn from my mistakes, and, um, and yeah, accelerate your uh, process much faster than I've had to do, which you know, over five, six years is quite a long period to get to where I am. And I could have done it much faster, I know now, and if I'd got the help I needed much, um, you know, earlier along. So congratulations to you guys who are already here, and I know some of you I'm already working with. So hopefully you won't have those um, issues that I've had. As I said, do stay to the end if you can't watch. And I know, Angela, you've got to go early, for example. If you can't stay and watch the whole live session, do come back and watch the replay. And because I am going to help you, again, understand how we can dig deeper in these different principles that I'm talking about today. Um, and also, I have a special offer for those of you who are watching live and also the replay. But those of you watching this session, um, I have a particular um, extra little bonus for you if you stay and watch until the end. So without further ado, who is ready to accelerate their business in 2020? Woohoo! Everybody give me a whoop whoop and let's see what the comments. Anita, great to see you as well. Um, so we're talking how to accelerate our business in 2020. And I'd love to hear from you, by the way, throughout um, what your insight is from what I'm saying. I'm going to talk you through five different principles. Um, of course, it's quite high level because you know, we have an hour or so together, it's difficult to get into all the details. So if there's a particular aspect that's really important to you, take this opportunity to ask me now, um, and then we can really probe deeper and see um, where you have maybe the biggest opportunity to develop. And that's what I'd encourage you to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through again the five pillars of the sustainable escape plan. So you may recognize this if you have been part of the nine to five escape plan workshop before, but we're going to be looking at them through the lens specifically of where we all are, where you are in your business, and then with a specific goal of wanting to actually replace our income to get the business up from just having a bit of word of mouth, referrals and so on, to consistently getting those clients. And maybe not in this year, depending on where you are in the process, but having that game plan knowing you know, I've tripled, quadrupled, whatever it is, from a very low base, my income in 2020, and then I know I have the plan. You know, once you've got five clients, you know you can 10 times that by getting 50 clients, let's say. So that's what I want to be. I want to know that I know where I'm going, I know I have the steps in place to get there, so to have that confidence, to have the strategy in place, and to have all those actions. So do let me know throughout, and I'd encourage you to reflect on which of these five pillars do you think is the biggest gap for you right now. 
So it might be, and already to um, hint a little bit, it might be that you know you have a really clear vision, but actually you haven't been working so much on bringing that to life in your content and your personal brand. Or maybe you're great at building your credibility and authority, but you haven't actually got the right business model in place in order to have the pricing, the packaging, the client understanding and so on, to be able to charge the prices you need in order to make it all work throughout the year and actually get the numbers that you need. So let's dive in. And again, we're going to talk the five pillars. So first of all, it's having a clear definition of what success looks like for you. The second is having the mindset. So developing the confidence and above all the resilience that's going to help you to stay focused and not give up too soon and really to believe in um, the fact that you can do this. And as wishy-washy and woo-woo as that sounds for those of us who are quite rational beings and from these corporate backgrounds, I can tell you that about 90, 95% of our success is going to be in our mindset. So that's a really critical one. The third one is having the right business model and business plan in place. Now, a business plan, by the way, if you Google the definition, is just a plan for the successful operation of a business. So of course, you need to know what success means for you in order to have that business plan in place. Then we want to have the long term effective platform that's going to build our brand, our credibility and authority so that we're actually attracting clients. We're building that long term brand rather than just, um, you know, working for whoever and whatever comes along and just lowering our prices and becoming a commodity, really positioning ourselves to be strong, regardless, in fact, of whatever happens to the business we happen to be working on now. It might evolve. It might change. We might even go back to a full time job. Who knows? but really positioning ourselves in a strong place with that personal brand. And then finally, one of my favorites, as you probably know, if you've been part of my community for a while, work-life integration, it has to work around the rest of your life. We can't be pushing ourselves and having a business model that requires us to work, let's say, 40-hour uh, weeks just working with clients, because then, guess what? We also have the marketing, the business development, the accounting, the admin, and all the other stuff, let alone family and hobbies and, and sports and so on, right? So that's never going to work. So those are the five pillars, and I want to dig into each of those with you this evening. And again, I'd love to hear from you, and for some reason, the comments aren't scrolling, so I'm going to have to manually um, scroll through here. Um, but um, do let me know as you um, listen if anything particularly resonates and if there are any questions. And Angela, yeah, I think it's a really important one um, to reflect on. In fact, for me, publicity is going to be the big focus for 2020 because I tend to be talking to a lot of the same people. So my Facebook group is growing, you know, quite gradually, and my email list, some of you may have heard that I had to sort of halve that email list recently because of Russian hackers and all sorts of issues, but fine. You know, it's been sort of growing and I've got my programs in place and I know I've got a working model and so on, but now it's a matter of scaling that. And so now I have kind of my house in order. I have the behind the scenes. I, you know, I'm updating my website to make sure it's where I want it to be. I'm going through all my different um, opt-ins and, and email sequences and so on and my social media presence. But once I have that in order, then my next step is now to make sure that I have more people coming. And when they come, you can bet your bum on that I will be ready for them this time because I have everything in order and I know what to do with them when they come to me, which I just did not do several years ago. So, you know, sometimes we're just not in the place to take advantage of the things that we think is going to be some game changer. And actually, because we only have that one piece of the puzzle, we don't have the foundations in order to take advantage of it. Um, likewise, actually, another example, which is not from my own um, experience, but I always find it um, crazy, the experience I had with somebody Several years ago when I was ready to really step up and pay a more expensive business coach, I found someone, she really resonated with me. I've seen a webinar with her. She came across so credibly. She seemed to have exactly what I wanted and needed at the time. And on her website, she had, I think, a 5,000 pound package. For me, that seemed like a lot at the time. It might be for you, you might have invested much more than that. Um, but it was something that for me, you know, I felt like, no, this is worthwhile for me to invest in. What happened was they completely lost me. They didn't reply to me. Um, eventually, I got an email from one of her minions rather than her, which is fine. You know, we all have teams helping ourselves out. He hadn't read my um, application when we got on the phone. In fact, he was 20 minutes late for the phone call. Um, you know, the, the only time they had was sort of three months later and so on and so on. The email had lots of spelling mistakes. And once I got on the call with him, he said, no, no, that 5,000 package doesn't exist anymore. The best thing for you is to go for this $50,000 package and flying to Los Angeles and whatever it was. So not only was the whole so-called nurturing process of getting this lead into the funnel very, very hot buyer, I was ready to pay 5,000 pounds. That wasn't in place. 
not only that, but they also didn't even have the infrastructure to back up their massively inflated prices. So their website was still talking about these £5,000 packages, um, and yet they somehow thought that uh, I would want to jump up to this 50,000. So it's just an example. Some people might come across being incredibly um, credible on the surface, but when you actually begin to work with them or try to work with them, you realize they, again, don't have that infrastructure and system in place. So that's something we all want to make sure we're not doing. So we'll talk about pricing in a minute. Um, but if we do want to increase our prices, we better make sure that we have the infrastructure, but also the value, right, to um, to support that. So we can charge a hundred thousand pounds per year for our coaching, but we better make sure that's a pretty extraordinary experience. You can't then invite them to the Facebook group and do a few lives if you're asking them to pay a hundred thousand pounds, in my opinion. So let's get started. So the first one is, of course, my favourite: identifying what success means to you. And hopefully, you're all indoctrinated by this by now. And I hope you'll um, permit me to explore it a little bit because it is such a crucial part of this whole process. You have to have a clear vision of what it is you want to do. And when I say what it is you want to do, I don't necessarily mean the exact um, job description, what your business is going to look like in the next 20 years and so on. But you need to understand what's your bigger mission. And Angela, you and I talked about this. Um, we were looking at Angela's website a few weeks ago and she had this heart mission I hope you don't mind me sharing, Angela, which is fantastic and strong. We've talked about it for several years and that's where she felt she wanted to go and that's where she is um, working towards now. Um, but then she had sort of gone off in a little different direction because she felt that that was maybe where the need was, uh, not the need, sorry, the um, sort of the, what would you call it, Angela, the, um, uh, the best way, I guess, the tactical way to position her website in order to get more clients, let's say. And it's so important, any business you work on is going to take time energy effort so you'd better make sure that this is something that you really care about passionately now any business you decide on you're not going to be pioneering these days right everything has been thought of which is a good thing it means that you know we all have opportunities to um, also succeed and it means there are already people out there who have pioneered and we can just kind of follow and know that it's possible but you're never going to be the first. And if you are the first, first you should probably ask yourself, hang on a second, um, there's something wrong there. But you want to make sure that you're unique, you have that really strong mission that you can then get other people behind. Um, so having that really clear sense of purpose, vision, your why, is the absolute number one thing. But what doesn't work is if you have a scattergun approach, you try to do this and then you try to do that, um, no consistency and of course therefore no results so you need to understand what is it you're trying to create and yes be flexible along the way in terms of you know um, I know I want to get here and I'll take one step here and I'll learn a little about that and then I will say yes to this project because with intentionality I know that it is bringing me this skill this experience this testimonial whatever it is but always looking at that bigger picture having one eye on that and knowing that you're moving towards that not just saying yes to any opportunity that comes along and not just trying everything now there is there is a space a time I suppose for exploring and trying lots of things and if you're very early on the process which you know we're not talking to you right now you you need to talk um, about my other program one step outside the nine to five but we're talking about you who already know what business you're doing if you didn't know that if you're very early on yes there's this fantastic exploration that we need to do and follow other people and learn and try and so on but now we're talking about you who want to take this business that you have and run with it and that's not the time to explore and listen to 10 15 different gurus and follow everybody that's the time to buckle down focus run your race shut out the noise and go this is what I'm going to do and follow this strategy um, oh, I love that question, Rita. So for a diverse portfolio career, and hi, Terry, great to see you joining as well. For a diverse portfolio career, how do you set the purpose? Different missions for each career. That's an interesting one, Rita, and I'm going to have to think on my feet as we talk about it, but I'd love to come back to that. And in fact, I would love to do a whole session on portfolio career because it's such a powerful one that I think more and more of us want to do. I would suggest that we have an overall sense of purpose for us as an individual. So knowing, let's say, Rita is a multi-passionate person, she loves being creative, but also um, intellectual, and, and I'm just making up different words, but you know, there are different sides to her personality, and her mission, her definition of success is to be able to explore different aspects of this, 
um, to be able to do something creative, but also to do something perhaps that's more in kind of the corporate vein because that kind of intellectual, challenging, stimulating work is really important too. Um, there's also the big picture, of course, that we want to be with our young families um, or we want to be able to be with our perhaps elderly parents, whatever that might be. We want to live a life that we can travel, that we can move to the countryside, to the ocean. So the big purpose is the meaning of life, the big ultimate question, which yes, is quite uh, scary, but exciting too. And then yes, absolutely, for within each business, you'll need a mission from sort of a marketing standpoint, in the sense that if I have a, um, I don't know, a soy candle business over here, then of course that website's going to need to have a different mission to my yoga business over here, whatever it might be. Now Terry's just joined and I know that Terry and I have had this discussion many times in the past as well about that personal brand. And in fact, coming back to my own websites, and I'm ashamed to say that I think I talked about this a year ago and I haven't done much about it, but I had my old website, AnnaLundberg.com, which is really my personal brand. And there's an opportunity for that to be really the whole me. So me as um, a coach, a speaker, a writer, and all sorts of personal things as well. On the other hand, I have OneStepOutside.com, which then is my coaching business. So it depends, it's a bit of a long answer, Rita, but it depends, of course, how different the businesses are. Um, but I love showing up authentically and being whole and being that whole person. Again, with Terry, we've talked about, you know, I'm an amazing graphic designer, but I've got this kind of punk element and I'm a surfer and I care about the environment. So how can you weave um, that together? In fact, Sarah, who's also here in the group, we've worked together on bringing together her shiatsu and her PR background and her mission um, in terms of community and bigger messages around earth energy and all sorts of things and I think we feel the most energized and excited by our vision if we are bringing our whole self to the table now that doesn't mean that on every post and every channel I'm going to be posting about everything so I'm not every day going on LinkedIn talking about my baby daughter perhaps in this case it's not a business strategy at the moment and um, I'm not talking about um, my coaching and also by the way I can do this writing and also by the way I'm looking at maybe doing this in the future and so on so from a marketing strategy we need to be more focused but I think from the big picture vision perspective I would uh, really recommend that you come at it from that whole perspective and I know Rita you're a bit earlier on in the process still in the exploratory phase as well so I would encourage you to dream big explore imagine before you get too focused and start worrying too much about specific um, clients and objectives and purposes and so on. So hopefully that's given you some things to think about, but great question. And sorry, I have to keep scrolling down. It's not automatically scrolling here. The purpose of life, I know it is a big question. I have lots of exercises to help a little bit, a tiny little bit of the puzzle. Um, but of course, I really think this time of year is the best time to reflect on these things. It's when we're with our families and with our loved ones, going for a walk, having a bath, going for a run, whatever it is, that we really get those sort of ahas and um, taking a step back from the day-to-day -day hustle is when we get the biggest insights. But yes, number one, identifying what success means to you. And I can go on about this for hours and hours, but strong connection to your why, your purpose. Less sexily, but also importantly, really knowing your numbers, right? So if we're going to try and let's come to the specific question here. And hi, Denise, great to see you. And we're talking about defining what success looks like for you, specifically when we're talking about getting your business up to the place where it's bringing in enough money. Now, of course, the question is, how much is enough money? Is it that arbitrary figure that happens to be your six-figure corporate salary? Um, is that enough? Is that too much or is it not enough, perhaps? Maybe you want to make even more than that. That's just an arbitrary figure that a particular employer has happened to give you. And as Serena, who's here in the group as well, has said to me once, um, by definition, companies are only going to pay you less than what you're worth because otherwise they wouldn't be making money. So perhaps your salary is not the best um, s s uh, symbol of how much you're worth. On the other hand, perhaps you can live with a lot less. So really knowing your black and white numbers, what are you actually trying to achieve this year? And, you know, certainly this is another mistake I made in the past that I would just sort of dabble what through and I'd think, you know, I was working through my savings and essentially at the beginning um, and I wouldn't really look at my numbers and think, okay, in order to make this much, not even six figures, in order to make 20,000, 40,000, 50,000, whatever it is we're trying to make, I need to have this many clients and so on. And if you start looking at those numbers, then when we get to the business model, we'll see, hang on a second, with, you know, with my target income that I'm trying to get to and with the programs and services I have at the moment, there is no way I'll ever get to that unless I get 20,000 clients or something, right? So then you can go, okay, that's not great. However, we can do something about it. 
So much better to have that clarity at the beginning of the year, really know what those numbers are, know that it is ambitious, but it's possible, and then work really hard towards that. Now I have, you can't see here, thank goodness, my blackboard, which is at the moment quite empty, but in general, I can put there the priorities. I've got the calendar for next year. This is the launch I'm doing. Um, you know, this is what I need or want to do here, and I'm going to write this new book, and so on. And you can have your goals, your vision on a board like that, but having that single-minded focus, knowing that that's what you're working towards. So both from the meaning of life perspective, as I said with Rita, but also then from the more um, sort of, um, I don't want to say cynical, but practical, I suppose, income as well. So Angela's saying, Oprah said, thank goodness for Oprah, that our purpose for each of us is to give what we've been given. Oh, I love that but then we have to think about what exactly it is. Yes, and that is also what becomes difficult when we have that portfolio um, tendency. We have a lot of passions. And to be honest, it is so hard to do this with ourselves. I'm still struggling. My boyfriend keeps encouraging me to get sort of, he's got lots of people who are going to bring in for a brainstorming for me because you're so deep into your own thoughts and I do this and I do that and I love that and so on. And having someone external who's a bit fresher come to you and to, to look, oh, I get it, you do this. Maybe it's your grandma or you know your niece. If you can't explain it to them, then probably it's a bit too convoluted. So actually the classic, you know, if your mum can understand, if your 10 year old niece or whatever it is can understand, then probably you're in a good place. So that's a bit of a test we can do as well over Christmas. So that is the first pillar that we can talk about for hours. The most important one I have to say, um, and if you're not yet clear on what exactly you want to do, I don't want you to get paralyzed by that. I don't want you to not do anything. So again, if you're early on in the process, enjoy the exploratory phase of exploring, trying, experimenting, and so on. If you have the business now, then um, I would encourage you to really get clear, at least on not this big meaning of life question perhaps, but more for this year, for the next quarter, 2020, this is what I'm aiming for. So I want to get the business to this level and maybe it is replacing your salary. Maybe that's not yet feasible and that's okay because we're in it for the long haul here. So I've got a couple of clients in my other program at the moment who have a three year plan coincidentally and I love that because it sounds like such a long time and yet it's not a long time at all because if we're going to be working 10 20 30 plus more years what's a couple more years right and far better to really lay those foundations take those steps build on that um, than to rush into something and go yes I'm gonna make six figures this year and then of course of course maybe we would don't do that because it's unrealistic then we get discouraged and then we give up altogether so I'd encourage you to really have more of a sort of a trajectory knowing and um, you may also have heard of the j curve of business so initially you're going to go down unfortunately in the j and then it will go up and if you can persist through that down um that is number two that we'll come to in a second that is honestly going to make you put you ahead of 99 percent of other people so the first pillar is getting super clear on what your vision is and we've talked about both the meaning of life vision but also specifically for your business what is your mission that you're engaging your potential customers behind as well as financially and um, what are your specific goals for the year or even you know you you, you need to think about um, if I need to focus on my authority, maybe I need to put it, I'd like to put a book out there or start a podcast or whatever. So you can have specific goals like that too, but really getting clear on what your vision is and what success looks like for you. Now the second one, um, and again, I was hinting there, what we don't want to do is to give up too soon. So the second one is our mindset. It's about having that confidence and resilience to keep going, to keep going when we're not seeing the results, to keep going when someone else is doing better than us and we don't understand how come they're working for them and it's not for us, um, to keep going when we do a webinar and no one turns up or um, you know something goes wrong with the tech or we don't get the client that we thought we were going to get or whatever it is, and just to keep going, swallowing our ego, licking our wounds, understanding, okay, was it that the strategy was wrong? Was it that I didn't execute the strategy properly? Um, or was it just, you know, nothing personal? I didn't even have the numbers, right? So often we, um, while well, people will come to me and say, oh, but I've emailed two people and nobody's responded. Oh, okay, well, unfortunately, two isn't really enough. Um, statistically, you know, conversion rates, certainly from um, cold, would be 2% maybe. So then you have to email 100 people in order to get two responses. So that's something to think about. But again, the mindset, as I said right at the beginning, is almost the most important i'm torn between the success and the mindset one but certainly one of the most important pieces of continuing and having that strength 
confidence, resilience to bounce back when things don't work, to believe that, yes, I am going to make this work. It is just a question of when and not if and to be super, super focused. So a few things that we want to avoid here is one is and I hear this a lot. Oh, I don't actually need the money because I still have my job or because my partner is supporting me very kindly or, um, you know, I have my savings now. This is great that we don't need the money. It takes some of the pressure off. But from a mindset perspective, what you're basically doing is telling the world, I don't need money. I don't want clients. And that's not a good place to be in. So great that you don't need the money. Now go out and create a business and earn the money anyway, because that means that your business is success. Give the money to charity if you don't need the money, for goodness sake. But what you don't want to do is put out that message like, I don't need this. I don't need clients. What you're doing is getting stuck almost in playing small. And, you know, I always talk about getting out of the comfort zone. And the first step maybe is getting out of the corporate and starting your business. But to be honest, we have to keep getting out of the comfort zone because it's so easy to settle into, oh, I'm just doing individual coaching, for example. And it took me a big step to get into the group coaching. And then maybe now I'd like to do in-person coaching and do retreats and things. Oh, but I haven't done that before. So it's constantly stretching ourselves and trying new things. And again, it's swallowing that ego. Now, um, treating it like a hobby is another one, you know, oh, it's just something I'm sort of dabbling alongside. If you're doing this as a side hustle, you're never going to get it to the place of being a full time income. If you're doing it alongside a full time job, I was talking to someone in the latest Fearless Fridays um, interview that I do series. Steph Clark, so you'll hear from her in January, I believe. And um, she was talking about how she got to the point where I can't do this work alongside my full time job because she wanted to run corporate workshops. And surprise, surprise, her clients didn't want to run those corporate workshops for the weekend. So her initial step was to go down to part time four days a week with her existing employer. But then ultimately, of course, she had to make that decision to pivot into going full time into her business. Um, and so that's something to think about. You're never going to get potentially to those six figures if you only have weekends to work on your business and if clients are only going to work with you on weekdays, for example. Right. So. That's just something to think about. If you're just treating it like a hobby um, or if you're thinking it's never going to work, then to be honest, it probably never will work. Um, and the other one, of course, is to change things all the time. So, OK, I've done a webinar. No one turned up. Oh, well, give up. Try something else. And if we're constantly chopping and changing, not believing that I have the vision, I have the strategy, I know what my plan should be and I'm taking these steps consistently, um, then after three months, then yes, if we're not getting results, we might want to reflect and we should check in and maybe tweak some things. Um, but the last thing we want to do is keep chopping and changing, giving up um, before we've given it a chance. So that mindset piece is really important. So again, as I talk through these different aspects and whether you're watching live or the replay, I'd love for you to have a think about which of these areas do you think is the place where you have the biggest opportunity? So perhaps it was the vision or perhaps you have a really clear vision, you know exactly what you want to do, but your mindset, you might still have a bit of that imposter syndrome. Who am I to do this? I haven't yet got my formal qualification. I've only just started this and so on. So again, a whole other topic as to how we can build our confidence and resilience. But, you know, even when we are moving from one industry, one type of business to another, that doesn't mean we're starting from scratch. There are so many transferable skills. We have all that experience and credibility. And it's a matter of finding the elements of that, packaging them up in a new way and making you credible in this new field. So again, a whole other topic, but something to consider. We're not just, even if we go from corporate marketing to yoga or whatever it is, right? It might still be that we, and it definitely is the case, that we have experiences, skills, networks, understanding, even issues that we've experienced that we can absolutely bring to the table. So lots of things to work on in terms of that confidence and resilience, but above all, having the focused mindset of knowing I am going to make this work. It's just a question of when rather than if. Um, so that is the second one. And of course, also, it's uh, if I don't know how to do something, it's if you've heard of the growth versus the fixed mindset, it's not that I'm not a good entrepreneur or I'm not a good salesperson or I'm not good at presenting on camera. And um, it's a question of I don't know how to do this yet. I'm going to practice. I'm going to get better. I'm going to work with someone who's going to help me with this. I'm going to do a course. I am going to learn. So try to embrace that growth mindset of I don't know yet. But of course, I don't know yet because I've just started this business and I'm going to learn. And that can be a great specific goal for you to have this year. And um, that you know what I want to get better at, you know, in my case, let's say pitching publications. It's not something I've done before. I'm a bit scared about it, but I'm confident that I'll figure it out if I now put my attention to it. My podcast at the time, I was completely overwhelmed by the technology of it. What equipment do I need? Now I have this 
fancy microphone. Um, and as I said, I've been doing um, podcasting for a year and it's, um, you know, it's a doddle. I'd literally turn the thing on and I record and boom, done. So anything that we haven't done before is going to be unmanageable, overwhelming and scary. Um, but we can learn. And again, from the mindset perspective, knowing that I don't know how to do this yet, but I will find out. So that is the second one in terms of the mindset and building your confidence and resilience. And I know these seem quite wishy-washy and maybe you were hoping for lots of really great sales strategies and how to do marketing and Facebook ads, but I'm afraid that's not what we're going to be getting. We're looking at much deeper, much more powerful strategies and approaches that will get you to where you want to be. Having said that, we're going to get on to number three, which is defining your business plan, having the right business model in place in order to get you to where you want to be. And of course, this is critical. And a few things to avoid here is not having any kind of plan at all. Um, because really, if you don't have any kind of idea of who your client is, what you're trying to offer, what's the results, how are you marketing and so on, first of all, how will you ever know if you've got there? You know, you don't even know what you've done. So if you are successful, how on earth are you going to replicate that? Um, so that's no good. I hope you will agree, not having any kind of plan. You also can't go on and, and just think, oh, I can help everybody. And I always give the example that coaching, in theory, I can help anybody do anything. <laughs> so it's a very Socratic approach. The pure coaching is very much that I could help you maybe work on your nutrition and exercise and lose weight if that's the goal you have. I can help you in your relationship, in your career, in your business. I can help you um, if you're a student. I can help you if you're a retiree. I can help you if you're a man or a woman, right? Coaching techniques work on everyone and anyone if they're willing to be coached. But that doesn't mean and certainly cannot mean from a marketing perspective that I'm going to put up a website saying I can help you do everything. That's not going to be helpful. Now, that sounds really obvious, um, but I know and I've worked with a couple of you as well that, you know, sometimes it's hard to see that on our own websites. And we've talked about this before and I said that about myself too. We have to be super, super focused. And what we'll do in the new year as well, when I work with some of you in the new program that I'll talk about in a few minutes as well, um, we'll get really, really focused on having these sort of seasons for the next three months. We are going to focus single-mindedly on this type of client, this type of program, this offering, this product, whatever it is, knowing then, okay, right, this quarter, this part of the year, I'm pushing this particular um, solution to this kind of person. I can then consistently write content that's going to be about that. I can post in places that that person is going to be, um, and I can above all sort of work towards that one goal. And then again, if we see that that's not working, we can tweak, but we have to have tried it for three months is always what I say in order to, um, to be able to see if it's working. I'm going to take a sip of water in the meantime and let me know if there are any questions. Excuse me. It's always hard to babble away here late in the evening. Okay. So first mistake, no plan at all. Second one, work with anyone and everyone. Third one is pricing. So starting with super low pricing, um, it's such an easy one to do because we think, oh my goodness, I'm so honored that anybody would want to pay me anything and I've got to say yes because I need the money and so on. And that's disastrous because again, coming back to the big picture of you now know your numbers, you know what you need by the end of the year. If you have that figure, and if you're just getting paid $10 here, $20 for that, whatever it is, that's not going to add up. You're going to have to work thousands and thousands of hours. And um, I saw a really interesting article the other day about the most well-paid freelancing jobs, and I found it really fascinating. And there were some great things on there, um, data visualization, marketing, career coaching, all those things were on there, which is very promising. But the way they calculated was taking what usually is a year, so 2,000 hours, um, dividing that so as if you were working let's say 40 hours a week now we're not working 40 hours a week first of all we can't even if I were working Monday to Friday 40 hour weeks or more um, as I said I can't do all of that can't be paid work right it has to be doing business development admin accounting marketing sales and so on so there's no way I can calculate my rate based on those 40 hours not to mention the fact that most of us are trying to start a business because we want to have better work-life balance we want to travel we want to be with our family and so on so we probably don't even want to work those 40 hours so again coming back to what it is you want from your business and then tying that to those really clear numbers and going into your pricing, you're going to see, hang on a second, the maths doesn't work, it doesn't add up. So it might seem like you should start out low, and of course we will probably start lower at the beginning, but as we build our confidence, as we get to understand that, hang on, this isn't gonna work out, we need to think, am I ever going to be one of those people who has 500,000 people in my Facebook group? Maybe, I could be ambitious and, and believe that, or, you know what, I'm gonna work on high quality, 
lower quantity people. And then again, you set a higher price perhaps, but you make damn well sure that you're really providing the quality. And of course, this is the case if it's a product too, but we're talking mainly here services. So if you're going to charge high prices, make sure you work out what could you possibly do to charge that higher price. So if it's, you know, I get a shiatsu example. Okay, every other shiatsu practitioner charges 50 pounds an hour he goodness knows what but every other shiatsu practitioner the room looks like this and this is your experience and it's just very in out and whatever it is right okay i'm going to charge 500 pounds an hour oh sounds crazy but what could i do let's ask a theoretical question what could i do to make that worth 500 pounds right i could sh serve champagne and caviar i could make it the most luxurious experience ever i could provide not just that one hour session but we'd have a pre-session consultation a post consultation follow-up you'd get a, a pdf or well, not a pdf a beautifully bound book from me with exercises you can do and um, all sorts right so it's not about just inflating your prices for the sake of it and i gave the example before of this um, particular coach who did not um, back up her prices but it's about thinking okay if I were to charge this high number how could I make my program or service or whatever it is worthwhile for that now of course it's very much to do with our clients and so on and that of course is the business model so the business model is who is your client and um, how are you marketing to see them how are you going to reach them what are your prices and packages and so on but it's really getting clear on and what model is going to work for you in terms of the life you want to lead in terms of the income you want and so on and so that's absolutely critical and especially when we're talking here specifically the income of course the pricing finding the clients who can actually pay you is so critical now and um, we talk you know and i've worked with a few of you on this before but the sort of um pyramid of tiering packages because you have lots of free content you can give to people so it's not that we're being horrible people um, and we don't want to help people, right? So there are lots of things. If someone can't afford to work with me, I have the podcast, the book for four pounds, whatever the Kindle is. Um, you have lots of blog posts, free videos and trainings. And I give as much value as I possibly can. But then for the people who can afford it, of course, you'll get much better results working with me and so on. So you have to think of that tier of you're not some horrible, selfish, and by the way, that's mindset again, capitalist person, if you're charging more. You just want to be able to live the life you want to live and you want to help people as best you can. And the best way you can do that is by working with them really closely. Um, and that means doing a higher value offering right now. Again, you can offer lower tiered pricing for, for more people. You can do, in my case, perhaps I could offer a self-directed course where you could just get the email PDF and you could work on yourself. I know that you're probably not going to do that work and it's much more valuable if you work hand in hand with me but you know there's all sorts of creative ways in which you can think about how you can package your um services and how you can price them so it works so this is a big one business model business plan so let me know what you think great to see you Angela and um, I'll talk to you later thank you for joining them the beginning session I know you had to leave um but business plan business model it's a big one I'm sorry we can't go into sort of more detail but again if you feel this is the place that hang on a second I have no idea what she's talking about I haven't even thought about these things my pricing is definitely not going to work out to get me where I want to be then maybe this is where you should be focusing so hopefully you can take some notes maybe come back later listen again and we can talk about how to um, really design and refine the business model that is going to get you to where you want to be. So the fourth one is one of my favorites. It is creating an effective brand. It's building that long-term platform that's going to be all about your credibility, your authority. Now, linking back to pricing again, a mistake here is that we become just a commodity. If you could have any of a thousand career coaches or business coaches, whatever you want to call it, and if you're just competing on price, if you're going to be the Walmart or Target, there's always going to be someone who goes lower than you. Um, and you're going to attract a particular type of customer who's very price focused rather than value, then probably not going to be that self-motivated. In my experience, and what I hear from other people too, when you price low, that's when you actually get the most complaints. So someone who's paid you $10 is so much more likely to complain about your program or product, whatever, than someone who's paid more and understands the value and has invested in it, right? So it's a matter of the quality of the client you're getting as well. However, um, things to avoid. So this is a big one. Um, when you're starting out, you may be really thrilled that you get lots of word of mouth and referrals, which is fantastic. But as I always say to my clients, you're not in control now. You're not proactively managing that attraction of clients, nurturing them through the process, knowing that, OK, if I need more clients next month, I can do more calls or I can send more proposals, whatever it is. You're just sitting back, hoping, wishing 
um, think, keeping fingers crossed that they are going to come to you. And it's really powerful. And in fact, we can do things to nurture um, to actually actively manage those referrals. And I'm putting in place a referral um, program, for example, that we can actually actively encourage that. And let's say again, you know, I have a massage parlor or um, some kind of kids party uh, business. Um, that's the kind of thing that absolutely mums would share with other mums and so on. So you could have some kind of, you know, loyalty scheme or you get a free set of cupcakes. My, um, again, Serena here in the, the group was doing that. You got cupcakes when you referred another mother to, you know, to have a birthday cake, or whatever it is. So it's something we can manage, but we can't just rely on having those referrals. It's not something we're in control of. It's not the scale that we need in order to grow a business. Um, of course, not having a strategy at all. If you're just posting whatever you feel like whenever, you're not then building a consistent message. You're not going to be known for anything. And unless you're incredibly succinct and clear and, and good at crafting copy and creating content that sort of somehow seamlessly creates this picture for you, um, that's not really going to build that platform for you. And again, allow you to become more than a commodity. So the power of a brand, whether it's a person like me or if it's a logo like the Chanel logo, is that it's the aspiration. It's something that is, in my case, you know, a personality as a human being when the brand can have a personality too. It's that credibility authority. It's why you'd work with Denise instead of working with um, Jenny over here, right? It's because you know you've seen her work, you've had a call with her, you love her personality, her warmth, whatever it is. So this is really, really key. And as I always say, whether you change your business, whether you go back to another job, um, this personal brand is going to really stand you in good stead internally in your company to be positioned for the best roles, for example, in your own company, um, to be positioned so you have a good network and um, awareness of who you are and what you're good at among other colleagues externally. Um, so, for example, writing on LinkedIn and whether you're um, actively looking for another job or anything at all like that is fantastic to really grow your positioning, your brand, again, whether or not you want to start a business. Um, so not relying on passive referrals, word of mouth, not having a strategy, and again, not the low pricing, but also, as I said before, not the crazy high pricing um, and not having anything to back it up. With. So, of course, another massive topic in terms of building this, and we've talked about these things before, but getting people to know, like, and trust you, um, attracting them with consistent content, having, you know, three themes, five themes that I always talk about, reimagining success, I always talk about work-life integration, I talk about leaving the corporate nine to five, having those pillars of content um, that are really core cool and, and quite unique to you and cycling through those and, and having those weave into um, the programs and services and things you're going to sell, right? So having that really consistent um, approach to the content creation and also that funnel which is going to again which is what we're talking about throughout today and such a key piece that we'll be looking at in the new year and um, know exactly when someone's attracted to my brand this is the next step I'm going to take them to this is I'm going to nurture them they're going to get to know me this is the information they need and ultimately this program will be the best fit for them so having that kind of funnel and the content creation to take them from not knowing who you are right through to um, knowing who you are and loving you and wanting to work with you. Now, the hardest challenge here, I'd say, is keeping your eye again on that big picture vision, stretching, reaching up high while you're maybe making some pragmatic choices. But that's okay because your personal brand is the stretch. It's where you want to be. It's the vision. It's where you're aspiring to. And that's what you want to be building proactively. In the meantime, there's nothing that says you can't say yes to some of these lower paid, maybe behind the scenes, pragmatic things, right, that don't quite fit. But I am building this very coherent, consistent vision there. And as I always say, the fact that I focus on women in my marketing doesn't mean that men won't come to me. The fact that I talk about um, you know, business coaching doesn't mean that people don't come to me. Oh, my light's just gone off. Sorry, it's dark. Probably the battery died. Um, no, here we go. <laughs> um, doesn't mean that people aren't going to come to you for this other thing, right? So we're always worried that we're niching down too much and so on. But you want to be the go-to person. I still dream of this when, when you know, Rita's talking to Terry and she'll say, oh my gosh, you just have to talk to Anna. She is the person who helps you leave a nine to five and set up a business, for example, right? That's what we're aspiring to. And we want it to be super simple. We want to be known for that one thing. And it doesn't mean that we won't do a lot of other things as well. But it's again, just having that sort of elevator pitch, that kind of hook that's really easy for people to recommend you as well. 
Okay, so is that the area that you need the most work on? Building an effective brand and positioning yourself as a credible and authoritative figure. Maybe it's uh, putting more content out that's uh, really positioning you as that expert on LinkedIn, let's say, or wherever it is. Maybe it's on Instagram if you're more of a graphic, visual person. So maybe personal branding is the most important thing for you. So let me know if that's something, or if you have any particular questions on the branding and effective platform. And then finally, in terms of the fifth pillar, we are going to go on probably for another 15, 20 minutes or so. So it's a bit of a longer session this evening, but do catch the replay if you need to head off. Um, but the final one is the work-life integration. And again, it seems like, why are you talking about this? We're talking about money. We're talking about getting clients. Why on earth are we talking about um, work-life integration? And the thing is, again, if we're building a business model that requires me to work 40-hour weeks, with clients and then in the evenings also do the admin accounting um, I'm compromising my health I'm not able to sleep properly I can't spend time with my family and um, I can't exercise and so on that's not going to be viable and it's not going to be enjoyable and it's definitely not going to get us to having that full-time salary that we want and need so this is so critical as I always say it's cheesy but it's true and I'm gonna have a sip of water as well while we talk about this um, self-care and so on but when you are your business taking care of yourself is taking care of your business. So just imagine if you haven't scheduled any content, if um, you don't have a team, if it's just you and if you're ill, um, which you know it happens, but if you then can't work for several weeks and months, you have no money coming in, right? So really thinking about how you're going to take care of yourself, how you're going to maybe start outsourcing things and getting support system in place, um, even if it's just tentatively working with a VA, a virtual assistant or something like that, um, and uh, and yes, having that support system in place, being on top of things, so you're planning and scheduling things. You know, I had maternity leave earlier this year and I had to pre-record and pre-schedule a lot of content so I could take that time off. And those are things we need to start thinking about if we want this to be a sustainable business, not just something that ebbs and flows with our energy. So one day we're super energetic and we post lots of videos and then the next day, next week, we've lost interest and we're tired and we can't be bothered. That's not going to build a consistent stream of in clients either. So I'll just take a sip of water. <laughs> Okay, so what do we want to do? We want to prioritize self-care, of course. So whatever that means for you, drinking water, um, getting that exercise, blocking that onto your calendar, essentially, as if it was a sacred calendar appointment as well. Getting the support system in place, whether it's your partner, um, a friend, some, someone trusted. It could be a therapist even, who knows? It could be a coach. Um, but having the support system in place to make this work for you, having your partner on board understanding what it is you're working towards, being supportive and so on. Thank you, Rita, really glad that you're able to join and um, hopefully you can watch the rest of the session another time. Um, so work-life integration, you know, again, lots more we can say about it, but I'm a massive fan of time blocking. Um, so looking at your calendar, really thinking, okay, these are now, of course, bringing everything together we've talked about. This is the really clear vision I have. Um, this is the model, this is the, these are the priority actions I have to take in order to build my credibility and so on. These are the actions I have to actually take on my calendar. So every day I need to know that I have that one hour in the morning on my commute, I have the one hour at lunchtime, I have the evening, whatever it is, to make sure that those five hours, 10 hours, 40 hours maybe you have in the week, you're absolutely going to use those um, to the uh, biggest effect. So, while I um, pause to see if there are any questions so far, um, just a recap then of these five pillars. And I know I've talked about them before and we'll be digging into them even more in the coming weeks and months in the new year and the new decade. Um, but I hope you can see how they all weave together. And I'd love to ask you, what was your biggest, and if you're watching the replay as well, do join in and I can come back and read your questions and comments later. Um, but which of these is the biggest gap for you? And also, let's not just talk about gaps. Where do you feel like, you know what, I'm really clear on this, I have this really clear vision, or I'm really good at setting boundaries and having that work-life integration, I need to get better at being consistent with my personal branding, or you know what, I still have this imposter syndrome, or I'm still treating my business as a hobby, um, I'm, I'm not quite believing this is something that I can bring in. We might still have those limiting beliefs around, oh, the best way to get security and an income is to have a full-time job or whatever it might be, right? So it might be those beliefs you need to work on. It might be your brand. It might be actually working on the business model. And then, of course, if you're not sure how to do that, then partner with someone who can help you. Um, but I'd love to hear from you which of these um, you feel is the 
biggest insights I guess you've had from this evening, biggest takeaway, and also where you want to be focusing in 2020. So maybe one of these pillars is something you go, actually 2020, for example, with me is going to be building my authority, building my publicity, scaling up maybe. So that's something you might want to consider. Um, so again, going through the five pillars, the first of all is having a really clear definition of what success means for you, having that vision for your life, for your portfolio career, potentially for your business. The second one is developing the right mindset, being focused, believing that this is going to work. And yes, it is important to have that mindset. It's not just a wishy-washy and woo-woo, um, whatever you want to call it. It is really such a core cool part of believing. You imagine an athlete, he has to believe that he can win. He can believe he gets over the finishing line. He visualizes finishing. We have to really have that strength and resilience, knowing we're going to bounce back, knowing that even if this particular launch doesn't go as well, we'd hope we're going to pick ourselves up again and we're going to try something else. We're going to do the same thing and ultimately we will make it work. So that's the second pillar. So clear definition of success, really strong, focused mindset, having that strength, confidence, resilience. Number three is having the right business model in place. So that is the pricing, it's the understanding of the client, it's the mechanism through which you're going to nurture people through your funnel, um, having that so that it actually works for the income you're trying to get by the end of the year um, and for the life and business that you want to have. Number four is building that long-term platform. So we don't want to be just a commodity. We don't want to just be going willy-nilly taking any old project that comes along. Um, we don't want to be sort of wishy-washy in the content we put out there. We want to be super focused, knowing that this is what we want to stand for and making specific choices as to how we're going to build our brand and our business to come across, you know, as a credible authoritative person in those particular areas. And then number five, um, creating functioning work-life integration. So really making it work for you around your priorities, your own family, being able to exercise and whatever it is. So again, what is your biggest takeaway, whether you're watching live or whether you're watching the replay? And I know a lot of you are watching the replay, so hopefully you've enjoyed the session so far. What is your biggest takeaway? Where is the biggest gap that you really want to focus on? Now, Coming to the end now, um, and as promised at the beginning, I did want to share with you, of course, how you can dig deeper into these pillars with me, and also a bonus for those of you who have been watching live or catching the replay if you're joining me this year. Um, now, first of all, if this has given you a bit of a boost and you think, you know what, I know all this, yes, just need a bit of a reminder um, to boost your confidence, you think, yeah, totally, I know, that's all I need to hear, done. Um, I'm all set and I'm going to keep going and I'm ready to go. That is fantastic. And I'm so glad that this has helped you out because I know sometimes we just need to hear that. We just need to hear someone reiterate what we already know. And then we go, oh, yes, I know. I can do this. I'm going to do this. So then you'll go off, have a lovely Christmas, and then you'll come back to the new year and um, and be raring to go. And uh, And I wish you the best of luck doing that next year. Now, however, if you would like to partner with me, avoid some of those many mistakes that I talked about and dig deeper into these pillars over the coming year, I did want to talk to you about the new Outsiders Business Accelerator. I'm just seeing a comment there from Miranda. So really sort of think in terms of the five pillars. I feel I need to do some work on each of them. Yeah, and that could be the case, Miranda. So it could be that we have different aspects that we need to work on. It might seem overwhelming, but don't worry, we'll break them down and take them step by step. And in fact, you can even work on them um, you know, in that sort of uh, uh, sequential way, because of course you want to start with the vision first of all. And in every program I do, to be honest, we always start with vision and then mindset and so on. Um, business model, definitely. And it's so easy to rush into the business model and in terms of, oh, I've got to do social media and I've got to post this and I've got to create that and so on. And if we don't have the vision, if we don't have that mindset, the foundations, we're going to be wasting our time. It's not going to be successful. And that's the last we want to do. So great that you're recognizing that there's work to do across all of these, including work-life integration. And as you say, it's absolutely interwoven. So I think that's really insightful. And that may be the case for many of you that you feel that you need to work on all these things. And if so, then the Business Accelerator is exactly for you. So I know we've talked in the past a lot about the One Step Outside the 9 to 5 program, um, and that's really helping people leave the corporate 9 to 5, work out what business they want to run, and so on. Now, I'm talking to you who've already done that. So I know there are so many of you here in the group, and I've been talking to a lot of you in the past weeks and months um, who are past that stage. So we've been talking this evening about you know you want to do this, you know it's a matter of when rather than if, and now it's a matter of focusing doubling down, making sure that 2020 maybe, or maybe it's the next two, three years, again, I've said I've got a few clients who are doing sort of a three-year plan, is going to be when you transition full-time into this new direction in your business, 
or into stepping things up any more with a business or perhaps going leaving the nine to five actually in a more um, sustainable viable way and, and having your business bring in a higher income maybe the particular field or niche that you've been working on has um, been quite uh, not so lucrative let's say maybe you're working in, in um, a particular industry that doesn't allow you to set the massive um, or even make choices about the prices maybe it's very much defined by I know the proposal um, writing procedures and some more traditional contexts or maybe it's just you know the market just can't bear those prices whatever it is and then maybe it's time now to shift and look at okay if I can't change this over there what could I do um, to leverage my time better to follow my interest in another area and to be able to get the income that I want so the business accelerator is strategies not tactics um, it's not going to be um, a whole set of 150 different strategies to throw at you to overwhelm you. Um, it's also not going to be sort of a PDF that you download and then ta da, I leave you with that document, the five pillars here you go and go off by yourself. Um, so it's very much, very, very focused on the specific um, pillars, of course, going through these pillars, but really specific aspects that are going to make the biggest difference to you in. Um, getting to that place where your business is bringing that income. So it is going to be about getting really clear on what your goals are and reviewing your results every quarter. So we'll be doing that every three months. It is going to be looking at your mindset, of course, because we need to look at that confidence and resilience that is part of the foundation. And above all, and most concretely, and I think this is where most people are hungry for the, um, the input and the help, is with the business model, working on the pricing, working on the packaging, perhaps refining, you already have an idea of your client is, but working a bit more on refining, tweaking that, and really making sure that we understand what problem we're actually solving and focusing on that for that period of three months, for example. Personal branding, working on that effective platform, making sure that you have that funnel as well, where you're bringing people in, attracting them to you, becoming that trusted go-to person. God forbid we don't want to use the word guru, but the go-to person for a particular area, um, a particular problem that you're solving, a particular type of client you work with, whatever that might be. And then importantly as well, making it work for you around all the other priorities. Maybe juggling your different portfolio career aspects, or maybe making it work with a young family or traveling, whatever it might be. Um, so working through all those five pillars. Now, um, it's a different type of program to what I've been doing before. So it is a monthly program. You can join for a few months if you feel like you just want that little boost um, or you can join me ongoing. I envisage, envisage it being that some people might even stay for several years because we'll have a new curriculum and ongoing sort of flow of new topics every month. Concretely, um, the Outsiders Business Accelerator, and by the way, I should say, you can go to onestepoutside.com forward slash accelerate, onestepoutside.com forward slash accelerate, and you can have a look at the details there. You can also apply there. So it is by application, just so I can make sure that you're all at the same um, rate, the same sort of stage. Um, if you are earlier on in the process, then the One Step Outside the 9 to 5 program is for you. And if you have no idea what you want to do, by the way, then I have the Reimagining Success um, coaching package that we can talk about so if you're a bit stuck and not sure what's right for you then just send me a direct message and we can chat about it and um, but again now we're talking to you those of you who already have the basics in place you perhaps already left your job um, and now you need to get this up to the level that really it in a sustainable way replaces your income you're not working for your savings anymore you're not importantly taking jobs that you don't want to be taking just to make the money you're actually designing this business that you want building it for the long term, making some pragmatic choices, yes, in the short term, but building that long term platform and above all, making it work um, around your lifestyle as well. So um, if you are just getting started, um, it is absolutely a great way to make sure that you're focusing on the right things from the very beginning, right? So of course, if you're further along, if you're working on this yourself and you're not quite getting the results you want, this could be a great opportunity. Um, but if you're starting out now, and you've just decided now to go all in, this is a great chance to really make sure that you're looking at the right things from the very beginning. So um, in terms of concretely what you're getting in the accelerator, and we'll just have another five, 10 minutes, and then I'll see if there are any final questions as well. And of course, if you're watching the replay, um, again, do comment because I'll be checking over the next few days. Um, but you're getting a monthly recorded training um, where we'll be, again, diving into these different pillars and cycling through those throughout the year. So whenever you join, we'll make sure that we're working through these different aspects. Monthly training on core topics like the aspects of pricing and positioning and so on. 
Um, secondly, we will have a live mastermind call every month where we'll get together. And you'll get access not just to me, but of course the group as well. We'll have a private community, so it'll actually be on LinkedIn this time rather than Facebook, in the um, with the intent of becoming more of kind of a networking group in the long run, um, having that professional context, not becoming one more um, distracting Facebook group for you, but having that place where you can share your wins and articles you're writing and, and so on. And importantly, and I love that we've added this and I'm really excited about this, we're going to have a quarterly goal setting session. So we'll start in January for the JFM period, as we used to call it in the um, corporate world, then we'll do April, May, June, and so on. So throughout the year, we're looking at these three month periods, 90 days, 12 weeks, whatever you want to call it, um, and make sure that we're getting super clear on, okay, this is the client I'm focusing on, this is the packaging, this is what I need to get to money-wise, and then we can make sure we're adjusting as we go, rather than waiting until this time next year and going, hang on a second, I didn't really know what I was doing, I haven't set a specific goal, and now I'm not sure, have I achieved it, because I don't even have a goal, um, and I'm certainly not making the money that I want to make, right? And of course, in addition to that, you always have the option to add one-on-one -on -one, um, coaching with me. Now, all this is priced very affordably, if I say so myself. It's only £100 a month. Um, so I really intended for this to be a no-brainer price. Um, now, if £100 a month is a lot for you, then you definitely need this program because it really shouldn't be a lot. Um, you should be very easily able to recoup that from not even one client, right, from less than a client. So I've really designed this to be part of my offering that is much more accessible than perhaps, you know, one-on-one -on -one co coaching and so on with me. But I want to make sure that this is not a drain on your resources. This is not an overwhelming time suck or one more expense on your list of things you're already worried about. Because I know that we're in this position now. We want to increase our income. Yes, we want to invest, but I don't want to be adding to the burden. So not only do you have to replace, you know, your salary, you also now need to replace the thousands of pounds you're paying me. So this is the cheapest it's ever going to be. Um, but hopefully the price is attractive enough for it to be a no brainer. So it's more a question of, is this the fit for me? Is this the right time for me? Um, but really to have this as ongoing training, support, accountability, for those of you who want to be an outsider for life. So we've taken that step outside now, and now the danger is that we'll get sucked back into the corporate or we'll end up doing work that we don't want to do. Um, and this is the intent behind this program to really help you provide you with that ongoing support, the community, um, you know, the sounding board, the accountability to check in to make sure you're staying focused and so on. So I think it's such a massive help. And I've been part of, you know, masterminds in the past as well that have been so critical. Um, and, you know, even if you take one thing away from this or you make one future business connection from this group, I think it will have been worthwhile for you. So hopefully you agree. So again, you can apply at one step outside.com forward slash accelerate. Um, and in terms of what I'm hoping you'll come away from, you know, of course, these five pillars we're talking about, but I'm hoping you'll come away with a really reinvigorated focus on what it is you want to be doing and knowing that, yes, this is what I'm doing. I'm on the right track. And again, it's not a question of if, but when. And um, having that confidence and focus, having the mindset to know that, yes, um, this is the right strategy. These are the steps I'm taking. I'm focusing on the right things. And it's so easy. And I've done this with my coach in the past too. It's so easy to go off and think, oh, I need to change this. I need to call myself this instead and so on. No, no. An important piece here is to stick with it, stay consistent, stay focused, because that's what's going to get you the results. If you're constantly chopping and changing, you know, you're confusing people and um, a confused mind says no, as they say. And um, we're going to get really clear on the numbers so that you know it becomes really doable. So maybe it's this year that you can get your income up to those six figures, whatever it is you want. Maybe it's not this year, maybe it's another year, but we're going to be super, super clear on when that's going to be possible. And importantly, I think this is something that's really key for a lot of you is to get that really clear funnel in place. So understanding how you're going to track the client, how you're going to nurture them through that funnel to get to know, like and trust you and knowing how um, you'll take them through those steps to become a client who buys from you and ultimately not just buys once, but recommends you to other people, buys from you again, up levels into your next program and so on. And importantly, you're going to get better at balancing this with all your other priorities. Because again, if you know me at all, you know my philosophy, and this is so critical to design a business, not just that's giving you the six figures or whatever it is, but actually bring you the income that you need and you want while you're living the life that you want to do as well. Now, hopefully this is solving some frustrations that I know you guys have had. You're not going to be alone. It can be so isolating working at home, getting a bit lost, caught up in our heads and our paralysis. It's so difficult to look at our own websites with a fresh eye, um, I get so caught up in my own thinking. I'm so sort of overly intellectual about stupid things. <laughs> and it's such a 
valuable thing to have a group of people to have um, someone who's ahead of you a few years ahead perhaps who can remind you that hang on a second no 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 you're you're not focusing on the right thing or this is something you know that you can think about in a different way this is a mistake you can avoid so having that sounding board to avoid analysis paralysis and having the accountability so that you're not sort of going all over the place so again, just to recap, you've got the monthly recorded training, you've got the um, live call once a month, um, and that's it in terms of content, you know, so it's not overwhelming, it's not a whole comprehensive membership site with PDFs and videos and audios to go through, it's super easy to get, not easy, it's super sort of um, manageable, I guess I should say, this is again not something to add to your already full work plan, it's something supporting you rather than adding or distracting. So a monthly recording that you can listen to whenever you want to, on a particular topic, which by the way will be quite responsive. I have the curriculum already for this coming year, but it will be um, fluid in the sense of if there's something coming from the group that's really a burning need, then we'll make sure that that addresses that need as well. And we'll have the quarterly goal setting session, reviewing the results each quarter as well. Private community again on LinkedIn, and once again, the option to, um, of course, work with me one on one. And so why should you join me now? Well, first of all, this is the first time I'm running this, so it's a really exciting opportunity to be part of the Outsiders, the pioneering, founding members of the Outsiders. Why on earth would you postpone? And yes, I will be opening this up, so I'll probably be doing this on a quarterly basis. So every you know quarter as we do the goal setting, I'll be bringing new clients on. But why on earth, or let me ask you this, do you want to wait another three months um, and postpone it and do more trial and error and see what happens and so on? Or do you want to get going now hit the ground running in january and make sure that already by january in fact but certainly by march and let alone by this time next year you're in a much better place do you really want to get there and think oh wait well, if only i'd started earlier um you know i would have already been where i want to be now so if you have and particularly if you have already been sort of trying to work on this yourself this is a great opportunity to come join me very low risk again 100 pounds a month um, it's a monthly payment, so there is a one-off um, upfront payment that you can make and get a 10% discount, so you can pay a £1,000 for the full year if you'd like to, but if you're paying monthly, you can cancel at any point, so you know, the worst case scenario, you've lost £100 and you've learned a thing or two, which, you know, I can guarantee you that you're going to learn a whole much more, so from a sense of risk, I'm really hoping this is a really no-brainer decision for you, and again, it's the cheapest um, it's ever going to be. So, again, it's the end of the year now. And we want to hit the ground running in 2020. And just as an added sweetener, because it's the first time I'm doing this, I wanted to offer you something um, extra and exciting. So those of you who have been watching this session, I know most of you will be watching the replay. Um, but if you watch this and if you apply to the accelerator, so it's one step outside.com forward slash accelerate, one step outside.com forward slash accelerate. If you apply now this week, still before the end of the year, then I will give you actually um, a month of free uh one-on-one -on -one support from me and that means so i have this app boxer um which is a sort of walkie talkie app where you can send me voice messages um and we can bounce back and forth and it's something i only usually do for my one-on-one -on -one clients but it's something i thought would be useful for this group as well so if you do apply now and um, then i'll give you that one-on-one -on -one support in the first month of you joining the program to make sure that we're getting you all set up so that you know what you're doing and i can help you as well on you know i'm getting stuck on this and and so on so to fast track you into the program so hopefully that's a bit of a sweetener and a bit of a push over the edge to um take the decision now rather than waiting until the next time now just to conclude, this is for you, again, if you have the basics in place, so that's why I've got the application process to make sure that we've got you um, up to the right level. I know a couple of you have already sent me your applications, so um, that's looking good, and I've already been in touch with you if, if we're in the right position, which is great. If you don't yet have an idea of what your business is, or you don't know if you want to leave your job, whatever it is, get in touch, don't worry, I have other programs for you as well, but this is not the right thing for you right now. This is really making sure that we have people from the same level um, to make sure that we're not sort of going over all the basics again and again and keeping people back, but really moving forward and accelerating. Um, so again, you know, I have the one step outside the nine to five program and the reimagining success package, which can help you. And by the way, as soon as you've done that, you can graduate into this program as well. So, um, you know, lots of opportunities to move forwards and continue. Um, so if you have any questions, and sorry, I need to pull back the window here to see if there are any comments. Um, any questions at all, let me know on the pillars 
on the program that I've talked about. It is a new program. I haven't run it before. It is a lighter touch than many of my other programs, which it has to be in order to make it um, work with the lower investment. Um, but it still is so packed full of value. We will be digging deeper into these five pillars again over the coming months, cycling through those pillars. So starting with looking at our vision in January, we'll start right away when we get back first thing in January with that first goal setting session for the first three months of the year and um, setting really specific goals, having those um, action steps to hold each other accountable to as well over the first three months then we'll be moving on to the mindset piece in February move on to business model in March and so on and cycle through that ongoing throughout the year so you can join us now and um, of course you can wait until April and join in the next round but I would love to encourage you to join me now again why wait three months when you could use these next three months to accelerate your um, business already now and to start putting those foundations in place with the vision with the mindset and so on and of course again you get that extra one-on-one -on -one support from me from Voxer so once again, let's recap the pillars and have a think about where is the biggest gap for you. So whether you choose to work with me or you work with somebody else or you for now just want to keep sort of going by trial and error and working by yourself um, looking at these different pillars and seeing where is the biggest gap. And it may be, like Miranda said, it might be that there are different aspects you want to work on in parallel um, or sequentially. So first of all, having that really clear vision of what it is you want from your life, of course, but from your business specifically. Having that focused mindset with the confidence and resilience to know that this is what you want to do, you are going to make it happen and you can bounce back when inevitably things don't quite go your way having the right business model and plan in place to make it work for the income that you want and for the life you want to lead, the type of business you want to run. Building that long-term effective brand platform that's going to give you the credibility and authority to attract those clients, to allow you to price at the level you want to price um, and to know where your next clients are coming from and not be just that commodity that people are comparing a bag of flour with another bag of flour, right? You want to be the branded, um, luxury almost perhaps luxury but premium perhaps at least um, offering that's really going to add a lot of value and be exactly what they need and want and then finally one of my passions of course work-life integration so making it work for your young family for traveling for living in the countryside for whatever it is so we have got almost to the end of the 90 minutes I'm losing my voice um, so thank you so much for those of you who have watched part of all of this and I hope you do come back because once again it's quite an in-depth session um, lots to reflect on and go back on and certainly I will do the same and these five pillars by the way you'll see more and more of because they're really applicable um, whether you're just starting out right through to you know when you're more advanced in your business that's the idea of them and um, they're based again on my experience on working with different clients over the years um, and more and more in fact as I look back over all the work I've done all the content I've created so they all fit into these five pillars and really I believe that having these um, steps in place is really what's going to make this work for you so helping you define what success looks like for you and then going ahead and creating that for yourself so you know it was a massive topic today how to replace your salary in 2020 lots of great questions and comments coming in so thank you so much to those of you who were able to join live and once again if you do want to work with me in the new year of course there are different options I've done the other video on all the different programs um, that are available but of course the best thing to do is just to send me a direct message and um, but in the meantime the Outsiders Business Accelerator it is the new Business Accelerator starting in January get set up now apply at one step outside.com forward slash accelerate one step outside.com forward slash accelerate it's a short form not too taxing just again to make sure that you're all on the same page when we get started i'll back to you, get back to you right away um, to let you know if um, you know if it's a good fit or not and then we'll get you guys set up so we can get started in January well again we'll start with that goal setting session already for the first three months we'll have that first monthly training topic and we'll get you set up in the LinkedIn group as well so really excited to get started you have the opportunity here to be a pioneering founding member of the Outsiders Business Accelerator we're going to get mugs we're going to get stickers I've got all sorts of plans and um, so really exciting and of course if you sign up now before Christmas as well you'll be getting the one-on-one walkie talky support from me which is usually just for my individual clients so thank you so much for joining all that remains for me to be said is um, and I will be saying this again and again I think I keep saying it on every video but I just want to say a massive thank you for being part of the one step side community this year this week this evening um, I can't wait to continue working with you all in the new year new decade 2020 and if I don't see you before then I wish you a wonderful Christmas 
and new year with your family but in the meantime if you do still have time and you do want to chat with me don't worry we'll be around so do send me a message and we'll keep talking about the accelerator about how we can work together in the new year but otherwise i'll leave you be i promise to enjoy a wonderful peaceful time over the next few weeks and i will see you in 2020 so thanks so much for watching and um, really enjoyed working with you over the last weeks and months and i look forward to more of the same in 2020 and of course to coming back in a year from now and having one of you who has worked with me, who's watched this session this evening, being a success story. And you'll come back and you'll say, ah, oh, this is what I've done. I've now replaced my salary. I've left my job. I've got my 20 clients, whatever it is that you set for yourself. So how exciting would that be to come back this time next year and have actually realized that vision that you set for yourself tonight? And in fact, some of you that I've been talking to have said, oh yeah, I'm gonna work on my goals this weekend and so on. That's fine. Um, I think, you know, it's, it's getting a bit late in the day now and maybe now we just want to enjoy the Christmas time and we'll get started in January, but it is such an exciting opportunity to get ready and hit the ground running. So if you don't manage to do it now, we will be getting going with goal setting and reimagining success in January um, on the blog, on the podcast, and of course in the new Business Accelerator as well. So once again, onestepoutside.com forward slash Business Accelerator. Hopefully, no, sorry, onestepoutside.com forward slash accelerate. Onestepoutside.com forward slash accelerate is the link for the business accelerator. Say that quickly 10 times. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye for now.